Welcome back. We are now starting in Module 4 where we're going to talk about working with customers and jobs. This will be the module where we start talking about your accounts receivable. You have the ability in QuickBooks to track each customer that you do different jobs for, but you can also track the jobs individually as well. So if you want to track them separately or all together as one customer, you can do that. Let's go ahead and get started here with section one where I show you how to set up some of those customers and jobs and then there will be a second part to this. Make sure you watch both parts. The first thing you'll need to do is enter your customer name and their information in the customer center. The way you're going to get to the customer center is from your home screen, you're going to click customers right here. Remember you could also get to the same place by clicking customers up here on your icon bar or going to the menu where it says customers and accessing the customer center this way. This is a list of all of your existing customers right here and you'll notice they're set up alphabetically by last name. That is not something QuickBooks does automatically, it's something you will have to remember to do when you create your customer. It doesn't matter how you set this list up, but just do it in an order that's good for you so you can find those customers when you go to look for them. When you're looking at this list, if you need to make this column a little bit wider, you can actually pull this line that separates the column, just like you would an Excel spreadsheet, and that way you can see the full name. This column here shows you the balance that's owed per customer and also per job. This last column is where you would have an attachment if you had set one up. You would actually double click there and that would actually open up this screen where you could go and get a file that's in your computer by clicking here or you can scan something right here or you can drag and drop something that you might have on your desktop or an Outlook or something right into this window here. Whatever you do, when you click Done, it will be attached there and that way you can double click in the future and go open that up without having to leave QuickBooks to do that. Notice I'm looking at the active customers currently. If I pull this list down, I can also look at the full customer list. If you're looking at the full customer list, you'll notice there's this area on the left here that's kind of blank. And if you scroll down, you might see an X there. If I click next to a customer name and you see an X, that means that customer is now inactive. What that means is that when you're in QuickBooks working and you pull down a list of the customers, this customer will not show up on the list because they're inactive. However, they can always be activated again just by clicking the same X to activate them. And also, if you're actually wanting to use them somewhere else in QuickBooks and you just type their name in, it'll ask you would you like to activate them at that particular time as well. Let me go ahead and pick Active Customers again. You'll notice also the customer you clicked on, the information you see on the right side of the screen has to do with that customer or that particular job if you're clicked on a job. Here you see the customer information like their name and their address, if they have phone numbers that you've recorded and email address, you'll see all that right here. There's also some quick reports you can run related to this customer over here on the right. These are just links and you would click and run that particular report. Here is where you would actually attach a file. It's the exact same thing I showed you a moment ago as far as double clicking over on the left here. And then this is how you would edit that customer information. You would just click the little pencil icon, make your changes, and then click OK at the bottom, and those changes would then be reflected on this window. A neat little thing that you might notice as well is there's a map and some directions here. Now, if you notice, I can put my mouse on this line that separates the two parts of this window and drag straight down. That'll give me a little more room. If I click the map option, it's actually going to open Google Maps and give you a map to that particular address. Really cool little feature there. At the bottom of the window, you'll notice there are several different tabs, and the first one is the Transactions tab. These would be any transactions that occurred for that particular customer job that you're clicked on. If you wanted to go to one of those particular transactions, you just double click on it and it'll take you right to that transaction. This is a great way if you wanted to search for something instead of having to search all through QuickBooks and using the find feature, if you can get to this window and pull up your customer transactions, you can just double click and go right to it. 
Currently I'm looking at all the transactions. Notice that I can filter this list by looking at just invoices or just credit memos if I wanted to. I can also come over here and filter by date if I like. So currently I'm showing the fiscal year, but I could choose to look at anything that happened last week, last month. You get the idea. At the bottom of this list, you'll notice an option that says Manage Transactions. Here, I could go ahead and create any of these transactions for my particular customer, but chances are you're not going to be on this screen when you want to actually create one of these transactions. These are actually all on the home screen. Also, notice I can run some reports down here if I want to. This would let me view this list in a report format. The next tab over is my Contacts tab. These would be any contacts that I have dealings with associated with my customer. It could be the actual customer himself, it could be the person that works in the front office, the partner. All you would have to do is come down to the Manage Contacts and add a new contact. When you add a new contact, it's going to ask you information like the job title, the person's first name, their last name, and you'll see there's some fields where you can plug in phone numbers, email addresses, etc. And also, are they a primary contact, a secondary, or an additional contact right up at the top here? Once you fill that in, you would just save and close, and that information would show up just like you see right here as a contact. Now, if I wanted to open this contact, I double click on it and that would be like editing the contact and I could save and close it or just look at the information if that's all I needed. The next tab over are your to-dos. To-dos are things you have to take care of related to this particular customer. You might have to make a phone call, it could be you need to set up a meeting, you need to create an email and send it. These are to-dos right here and you can also see the status of your to-dos. Are they done? Are they still active or are they inactive? And also you can look at these by date if you'd like to. Let's set up a to-do so you can see how this works. I'm going to come to the bottom where it says Manage To-Dos and create a new to-do. Here's where I specify what type of to-do this happens to be and also where I set the priority. Is it high priority, low, or medium? It will assume it's with the customer that you're clicked on, but you can always change that to a vendor, a lead, or an employee if you want. You would need to set a due date for that to do. And if you wanted to put a time in here, you have to check this little box and then the time becomes available. Then all you do is put the details of your to-do down here in the details section. We'll say set up meeting with Aaron. I'm going to go ahead and click OK, and now you'll see that to-do shows up down here at the bottom. Now once I've completed that to-do, I would want to go ahead and double click where it says Done, and then this will pop up, and then I can change the status to Done, and it will look like this with a check mark there. The next tab over are your notes. Your notes would be any notes you want to keep related to this particular customer. All you would do is come to the bottom where it says Manage Notes and add a new note. You can put anything you want here in the notes section. There is a date and time stamp option you can click on and you see it just added the date and time there. And then I can write my note, whatever it might be. You can turn your note into a to-do and it would show up under the to-do tab as well. Notice you could also print that if you wanted to. I'm going to click OK and you would see any notes you had set up right here. Now the last tab is your sent emails. One of the features you have in QuickBooks is the ability to email any form to your customer. A form might be an invoice, for example. Once you actually send that out, it will be tracked right here so that you could see a list of these anytime you wanted to. Let's go ahead and do this. I'd like to set up a new customer and show you all of the things that you're going to have to tell it when you set up that new customer. Let's go ahead and flip over to Part 2 of Module 4. That will be Working with Customers and Jobs, Part 2. 
We just got through talking a little bit about the Customer Center and how to go through the Customer Center and look at the screen itself and get some information. What I'd like to do now is take you in and actually set up a customer and a job for that customer so you can see how this whole process works. We'll be going back to the Customer Center to complete this exercise. The way you're going to enter a new customer in QuickBooks is to come up to this option here where it says New Customer and Job. If you click the arrow that points down, here you can choose New Customer from the drop-down list. The first thing you want to do is plug in the new customer's name. And if you remember, we talked about our list being last name, comma, first name, right? You'll want to make sure you type it in the exact same way to keep the list consistent. QuickBooks is not going to sort by last name for you. You're going to have to type it in like this. The next thing you'll see is the opening balance. This is designed for if the start date of your company was January the 1st of your fiscal year and Tom Allen owed you $1,000, you would plug in $1,000 as the opening balance. Your customer's account would be correct. However, you wouldn't be able to go back and look and see that that was actually three different invoices that totaled $1,000. I personally don't put anything in here and I will go enter those three invoices separately once I've completed setting up the new customer. The next thing you'll notice is you're on the Address Info tab, and here you can put in things like the company name, the customer's name, the job title, phone fax, you can kind of see all these fields here. I'm going to go ahead and plug in a company name for Mr. Allen. We're going to say it's Allen Enterprises, and then I'm going to put in Mr. Tom Allen. Now a common question at this point is, if I had his name already up here, why do I need to put it here? The reason is because in a later module we're going to talk about doing mail merges with Microsoft Word. These are the fields that will pull his name from. It will not pull from this. This name is only to go in this list, so it's important that you fill this information in as much as possible. You can also change any of these fields that you see. If you wanted the label to be different, you can do that. And you'll also notice that as you're typing, it's pre-populating some of this address detail information for you. You would want to go down here and actually set it up the way you'd like it to be. This is what it's going to pull when you're creating correspondence for Mr. Tom Allen. So you may do something like this, and then you can go ahead and fill in the rest of his address information. You really don't need this unless you're in a business where you have invoices that go to one address and the customer asks you to ship the items to another address. If that's the case, you can copy this over and then change this information or leave it if you need to. Let's go on to the next tab, which are the payment settings. Here, if you have account numbers for your customers, you can plug that information in here. You can specify the payment terms. You may have some customers that you give them net 15 and others you give net 30. You can specify the delivery method. Does this customer like things emailed, mailed to them, or neither? Do they also have a preferred payment method? Do they usually pay you with cash or do they usually use their Visa card? You can also store the customer's credit card information right here. Now you would use this for customers who actually purchase from you on a regular basis so you don't keep having to ask for that information again. Even though this is a neat feature, I personally would never use this because you're liable if someone gets into your computer and gets this information regarding your customers. If you need to keep this information, just keep it somewhere else and just not here in QuickBooks. You can set a credit limit for your customer. The way that would work is if your customer credit limit was $2,000 and they purchase something that takes them over that credit limit, it will pop up and tell you that and still let you sell them something else. You can also set price levels for your customers. As an example, I'll just click Add New, but what if you decided that all your commercial customers would get a 10% discount automatically? You might name this price level commercial customers and then you might say the price level will decrease by 10% and that's all you'd have to do. You would click OK. And now QuickBooks would know that this is a commercial customer and they automatically will get 10%. Now you also can let your customers pay you online. 
you would have to set up your information with Intuit and that's done in the preferences but what would happen is if you've set it up already then you would be able to send your invoice to your customer via email they could click a button and pay you right then and there the next tab over I want to talk about are your sales tax settings if you collect sales tax from your customers there are some settings you'll want to put here in this window for example are they actually a taxable customer or not think about this if it's a nonprofit organization they may have applied to be tax exempt and that's when you'd pick non taxable also the tax item you're gonna to have to tell QuickBooks which tax item to charge this customer and we'll talk more about that when we get to the module where we talk about sales tax and then you have a resale number field if I sell chairs in my store and this customer also sells chairs they could have applied to the state for a resale certificate and if that's the case they wouldn't pay sales tax when they purchase chairs from me I could keep their resale number here just in case I ever needed it for whatever reason a few more things here under the additional info tab you can have different types of customers and you would create this list you'll see in this case they have commercial customers and residential customers if you have sales reps that work in your organization you can create a list of your sales reps and that way you'd know which rep works with which customers and then also here you have these custom fields you create whichever fields you might need in this section the way you would do that is you would go down here to define fields you would actually type the name of the field you want to create on the next line and then check off if you want to see that field when you're working with customers vendors and or employees so that you don't have to set it up three different times and that's how these were created right here one more tab is the job info and let me just say if you're creating a customer you're not going to put job info here because these are for jobs themselves let me go ahead and click OK and then we're going to set up a job so you can see how that works now if you notice over here I've got my new customer Tom Allen you'll notice that it did not put Tom Allen in alphabetical order what I can do is click this heading the word name here and that will resort the list and now you'll see he's in the list alphabetical by last name now let me show you how to set up a job for Tom Allen we'll set up a kitchen remodel make sure you're clicked on your customer go to the new customer and job tab button and this time choose add job I'm going to put in my job name which is kitchen remodel and you'll notice that it really has all the other information in here so unless something happens to be different I don't really have to change anything the only thing I might choose to do is put in information about the job I might have a description for my job different types of jobs in a list maybe the job status is it pending is it awarded in progress a start and end date for the job and that's where all that job info would come in and that's really all you do I'm gonna click OK and now you'll see a job called kitchen remodel underneath my customer Tom Allen and that's how you set up customers and jobs now what we're gonna do is when we start talking about estimates in this next section I'm going to show you how you can add a customer and job on the fly so that you don't always have to come back into this customer center. Let's go ahead and wrap up this section and let's go to section two and talk about working with estimates. Now that you know how to set up customers and jobs over in the customer center, let's start talking a little bit about creating estimates so that you can start getting some work and getting it set up in QuickBooks. This is going to be module four, section two, and this is part one of estimates. This is your accounts receivable section where we're going to start and you'll notice the first thing on the list is the estimates option. An estimate is like a quote for a job. If I want to have my kitchen remodel, I'm going to ask the contractor for a quote or an estimate on how much it's going to cost. You'll notice that estimates are on the same line as this option that says purchase orders. Both are non-posting. What that means is if I create this estimate, and this customer never calls to say do the job it doesn't affect my books in any way I'd have to run specific estimate reports to see what happens to be on that list if you don't do estimates in your job then start with create invoices right here once you're ready to invoice your customer you may not even see estimates on the 
screen here and that would be because if you told it in the easy step interview when you set up the company that you don't create estimates it wouldn't even be here I'm gonna click on estimates and this is your estimate screen right here the first thing it asks you to do is to pick a customer and a job from the list you can either start typing the last few characters of the person's name or you can drop the list down like this and choose your customer and your job just a little something to remember all throughout QuickBooks. Always, 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 if you're using the job feature, click on the job and not the customer. If you don't, what will happen is you'll run reports and it will say other and you'll go, what does that mean? I do recognize that all of you don't use jobs as well, so if you're not using them, then it's not an issue for you. Notice I'm clicking Tom Allen's Kitchen Remodel, and now I've pulled that in. And if there was any summary information or any previous transactions to see, they would be listed over here in this area. If you don't want to see this area over here, just hide it with this Hide History little arrow, and that way you have more room to work on your screen. Now something else I wanted to show you that I mentioned in the last section of Module 3. When we were setting up customers and jobs, I told you that you have the ability to set these up on the fly. And here's what I mean by this. Let's say that Tom Allen has asked me to give him an estimate for a sunroom. If you notice, I don't have sunroom set up at all, but I can do it right here. Now I could click Add New, but here's the quick easy way. Choose the customer and put a colon at the end of the name. Then you're going to type in the name of the job. And if you notice, you're going to type it exactly like you see here, customer colon job, and that's what I've done here. When you're finished, you have to leave the field. Hit the tab key on your keyboard, and it will say, Sunroom is not in the list. Would you like to set it up? Here I get an option to do a quick add, which is what I want to do in this case, just add it to the list, or if it was a new customer altogether, I could just set it up and go set all that information up. Now let me just say, if it's a new customer, you can't add both levels at the same time. You have to add the customer first and set it up, then you can go back in and add the job. I'm going to quick add in this case, and now if I look at the drop down, you can see I have sunroom and kitchen remodel on the list for Tom Allen. The next thing you'll see on the list is the option that says class. Remember I told you when we were going through the preferences that you have the ability to add a field called class to any of your forms. This class option would allow you to break your business down into smaller sections. So for example, if you have multiple locations, this could be that location list and you could choose from the list. If you're not using the class feature, you wouldn't even worry about that. This is the template that I'm currently using to create my estimate. In a later module, we're going to talk about customizing your templates or creating new ones because you may not like how this one is set up, but for now we're going to use the custom estimate template that you see here. This is the date of the transaction. It's going to pull the current date right now, but you can choose any date you like from this list. The next thing you'll notice is the estimate number. Now, just to tell you something that happens in QuickBooks, there are a lot of things that are numbered. Checks are numbered, estimates are numbered, invoices, and some other things. They're all going to start with number one. You probably want to change that to some other number. That way, the customer doesn't know they're the very first customer. Whatever number you choose, the next one will be numbered sequentially unless you decide to change it. Here, you're going to see the name and address that's pre-populated from when we set up the customer. If you decide that this happens to be the incorrect information or you'd like to change it, when you're finished with this entire estimate and you save and close at the bottom, it's going to ask you if you want to change it permanently in their record. So that's an easy way of changing that without having to go all the way back to the customer and set it up again. Now the next thing you're going to notice down here, you have to click your mouse to see this drop down arrow under item. An item might be an inventory part, it could be what we call non-inventory. There are different types of items that you can sell your customers and we'll be going through those when we go through the section where we talk about items. But for now, let's go ahead and use what they have on the list. Let's choose framing. You'll notice when I choose framing, it pre-populates a description in this case and a cost. 
You can actually type over the description and type anything you want. This will word wrap as long as you need it to as well. I'm going to hit the tab key and go over to the quantity and I'm going to say that we're going to estimate 10 of these for our customer. And then also the cost. Notice it brought in $55 and that would be for one of these. If I wanted for a one-time cost to put in 50 I could certainly do that and it doesn't change it in the permanent record. It's just on this particular estimate. Notice it skipped over the unit of measurement. Let me just tell you what that is real quick. A unit of measurement is when you want to sell something by the foot, by the yard, by the case, you could have a drop down pre-populated and choose it from the list. It has to be turned on and set up in the item and this obviously is not and that's why it skipped right over it. You'll notice the next thing is the amount, which you can't change. It actually calculates the cost times the quantity to give you the amount and then puts you over in the markup field. An item can be marked up a dollar amount or a percentage. I'm going to show you one of each. In this case I'll say 30 percent. You have to put the percent sign there or it won't know it's a percentage. And when I tab through, notice how it changed the total for me automatically. The last column that you see which says tax, this has to do with sales tax. Meaning is this item taxable or not? Typically a service is not and a physical item is. I'm going to go ahead and hit tab one more time. We're going to add one more item to this list and this time it will be a physical part. We're going to put in a wood door and I'll just pick exterior from the list. Let's put two of these on this estimate and you'll notice this time it has a markup already. I'm going to delete that but let me tell you why it had a markup. You'll see when we set up our items that if we tell QuickBooks that on average we have a certain price we buy it for and on average we have a certain price we sell it for, then it will calculate that markup for us. I'm just going to mark this up $1,000. Notice when you put in dollars, you don't put the dollar sign, you don't put the commas, and if it's just point zero zero, you don't need to put that in either. But notice again it just calculated all the way across. Now I can keep adding as many items as I want to this list. This is not the last line down here. This will go on pretty much forever. So if you have a lot of line items, don't worry about running out of space. I want you to notice at the very bottom it has the subtotal, the total of the markup, it has any sales tax, and it has a total down here. Let's go ahead and see what this would look like right now if I was going to actually send this out. We're going to be talking in the second part of this particular section about all these options here, but one of these is a print option and you can preview this. And this is what it will look like if I preview it. Notice it's very plain. It does have your customer name and it does have your customer address. It says it's an estimate. The customer does not see the item name. So when you're creating items, you can name those anything you want. And they also don't see the markup but this is what it will look like currently. I'm going to hit close and let's go ahead and stop the video here and go into the second part of invoicing from estimates part two. Now that you've seen how to actually set up an estimate, let's go ahead and talk about some of the things that you see on the estimate window that you're going to see on other windows as well. Let's take a peek at the tabs you have running across the top of your window here. Most of what you're going to use on a regular basis will be under the first tab that says Main. And a lot of these options you're going to see when you get into other windows that are similar, like invoices. The first thing you'll notice are these arrows that go left or right. And these are going to allow you to search through the estimates going left or right. You can actually search for any estimate you like, but remember that in QuickBooks, everything is in date order. So hitting the left arrow may not give you the actual previous one that you think it does. If you're searching and you can't find what you're looking for, use this find option right here that will allow you to put in some criteria like the customer and job name, for example, maybe a date range, an estimate number, or an amount of money. Obviously you'd have to know that information in order to type it in, but then you could hit this find feature right here and it would search through the estimates for the one you're looking for. The next option says new and this is actually going to save the estimate you're currently in and put you on a new blank estimate. 
It's the exact same thing as if you came to the bottom here and clicked on this button that says Save and New. The next thing you see is the Save button. You can save this as an estimate or as a PDF file, which is very handy if you plan to email this out to someone and you don't want them to make any changes to it. Here's where you would delete the estimate if you wanted to. Notice you could also create a copy. Basically, if you had to create another one similar to this, the easiest thing to do would be to create a copy and then make the few changes that you need to make. Let me mention the Memorize as well, and we're going to do this in a later module, but if you have transactions that happen on a regular basis, instead of typing them every single month, you can actually have it memorize it, and then you can actually make a copy come in automatically by double-clicking on the memorization. And I'll show you how that works a little bit later. You also have the ability to mark invoices and estimates as inactive. Basically, that means that they don't show up on reports. It's almost like they're not there. They're hidden, so to speak. And when you want to activate them again, you can just click the button, and then they show up in reports again. Here's your print option. I showed you previously what this would look like if you previewed it. But I want you to notice also that you can go ahead and use this to print your estimate right here or to create an envelope. This will do a mail merge with Microsoft Word and the envelope will actually come up already addressed ready to go to Mr. Tom Allen. And there's your option to save the PDF as well. Here's your email option. You have the option to email this directly to your customer if you like. When you email this, you're going to have a chance to put a little memo on the cover sheet, as I call it, and then you'll be able just to send this right over. The option that says batch here, what that means is that let's say you've got to send two or three of these. You can check the box here that says email later for each one that you do, and when you're ready to email them, you email the batch and it will send all of those over at once. You can attach a file to this. Some examples might be maybe you got some bills in or some quotes from one of your vendors and you just want to attach it here. It doesn't necessarily go over to the customer if you email it. It's just really more for you so you don't have to get out of QuickBooks and go look and find that file. You can also go ahead and invoice your customer from here, but chances are that you're not going to be on this window when you're ready to create an invoice, but you could if you wanted to. Now let me just mention the Start Project. Intuit actually sells another software package called MavenLink. It actually is a partner to QuickBooks, but it's more of the customer side of things. If you wanted to check it out, you could click on Start Project and it would take you in and give you a 30-day free trial. The next tab over is your Formatting tab. You already know how to preview this estimate. These three here we're going to talk about when we get to the module where we talk about customizing your forms. That would actually allow you to customize the look of this estimate. Here's your spell check. Remember to always run your spell check. You want to look professional and not have misspelled words when you're sending out estimates for jobs. Here's a quick way to insert a line. It's going to go above the one you're clicked on. Here's a way to delete the line you're clicked on or to copy the line you're clicked on. And here's more options that have to do with customizing this particular estimate template. The third tab over is your send slash ship. These options here have to do with actually doing mail merges with Microsoft Word. We'll do those in a later module. And then there's the reports option here. I want you to notice a couple of these and they all have to do with estimates. One of them I want you to pay particular attention to is this transaction history. Now we don't have a history right now, but if we had already created an invoice based on this and maybe received a payment, that would create a history we could go look at. Your reports are your estimates by job, item estimates versus actuals, and your item price list. Like I said, most of the options you'll use on a regular basis are under the main tab. Now if you look down at the bottom left, you'll notice there's a place for a customer message. QuickBooks has some pre-formatted ones already set up. If you like one of these, you can go ahead and just choose it. But you can also create your own by clicking on Add New. Underneath that, you'll see a place for a memo, and you can say anything you want in this little memo field. 
and also a place where it says customer tax code. This has to do with sales tax. If your customer is subject to sales tax, you would want to say tax. If not, you could say non-taxable sales. Also over here, you're going to have the subtotal, the markup, you're going to have the tax if there was any, and the total. Your options below that will be to save and close this, which means it's going to save this estimate and close it and you'll be on whatever window was behind this. You could save this and create a new one or revert. Revert basically means to clear everything out back to when you last saved it. I'm going to go ahead and hit save and close. And now you'll see I'm back on the previous screen. If I wanted to go ahead and open this estimate again, notice I'm in the customer center. I'm going to click on my customer, find my estimate, double click, and I'll be right inside that particular window. That's pretty much how estimates work. After you finish estimating a job for a customer, the customer is going to call you and ask you to do the work, and that's where the invoicing comes in because you will want to get paid for your work. Let's move over into section three and we'll talk about invoicing. Hey there, welcome back. We are in module four where we're talking about working with customers and jobs. We're all the way down now to section three, invoicing from estimates, and this is part one. There are two parts to this. You've got those estimates that you've created and they're just sitting there. The customer actually asked you to do the work and now you want to get paid. In order to get paid, you'll need to send an invoice to your customer and that's where this section comes in. Let's go ahead and get started and talk about how to create invoices from estimates. One of the things we talked about in section two when we were talking about creating the estimate is the fact that if you're actually on the estimate, you can create an invoice right here. But remember I told you that you're probably not going to be on this screen when you're ready to invoice your customer. Let me go ahead and close this estimate and I'll show you how to create that invoice. I'm going to head over to the home screen. If you're following the flowchart on the home screen, you'll notice you've already estimated the job, so the next thing in this flowchart is create invoices. At this point, this will be considered accounts receivable as soon as you save this. Notice the screen looks very similar to the estimates. The first thing it asks you is to pull in your customer and your job, and in this case, it was Tom Allen's sunroom. Now what should happen if you have an estimate already set up is you should see this window that says available estimates. These would be any estimates you've created that you have not yet pulled the entire thing into an invoice. If you've already invoiced everything, then this will not pop up for this particular customer and job. If this doesn't pop up for some reason and you think it should, some things to look for. You want to make sure that this name here is the exact name of the estimate you created. If this just said Tom Allen, but the estimate said Tom Allen's sunroom, that would not be an exact match and then it wouldn't pull this window up. The other thing that happens very often is because you can flip back and forth between the windows when you have the open window list open, a lot of times you don't save and close your estimate and then that would cause it to not show up as well. So just kind of know if this window doesn't show up, go figure out why. I'm going to choose the particular estimate that I want to pull from and I'm going to click OK. If you remember when we set up our company file, one of the things it asked us was, would you like to do progress invoicing? I explained to you that that basically meant if you have an estimate, you can pull in a portion of that estimate until you've actually invoiced everything. Here's your progress invoicing window and you get a few choices here. Notice the first one says create an invoice for the entire estimate. You can also create one for a percentage of the entire estimate. You would just put in whatever percentage you wanted. And the bottom one lets you create an invoice for selected items or for different percentages of each item. I want to just show you this one for a moment and then I'll come back and we'll pull in 30%. But if I choose this bottom one and click OK, what this shows me is each of the items that I have on my estimate and I can choose to put in a quantity for each one. So I may say something like three of these and one of these. Or I could come over in the percentage column and say that I want to invoice for 10% of that and 30% of that. 
However you want to do it, certainly okay. I'm going to go ahead and cancel that for a moment. And just so you'll know, when you do cancel, it keeps the customer and job here. You have to actually go clear the form down at the bottom. Then you can pull your customer and job back in again like this. Here's my available estimate window again. I'm going to choose my estimate and then click OK. And what I really want to do this time is just create an estimate for 30% of the entire estimate. I'm going to click OK and now you'll see that it's brought in 30%. What I want to do now is if I wanted to add something to this I could maybe like a shipping charge or some kind of miscellaneous charge. All I'd have to do is on the next available line just go down and find whatever it is that I want to add to this. Now let's say in this particular case that we want to go ahead and add a delivery charge. I'm going to add one of these at $25 and this will not affect the estimate at all. You can always go in and add miscellaneous items like that. A couple things to notice, if you look at the bottom left, again you have a place for a customer message. These would be some that are pre-populated by QuickBooks. You could add your own if you wanted by choosing Add New. There's also a place for a memo, just like we saw with the estimates, and also your customer tax code, whether they should be charged sales tax or not. Here it tells you the amount of the sales tax, the total, if there were any payments already applied to this particular invoice and the balance due. Back up here you have the date of the particular invoice. Let's say that this one is dated December the 29th. It has your invoice number and remember I told you that this will start with number one so you will want to change your invoice number to some number and then the next one will be numbered sequentially. You've also got a place for the terms and the due date of that particular invoice. Let's go back up here and look at your tabs again. We talked about the fact that most everything that you would want to do on a regular basis is under the main tab. You will see that you can search through your invoices. If you're looking for a particular one, you can use your arrows that go to the next or previous. You could use your find option like we talked about again with estimates. The next one over is your new option. You're going to be able to save this invoice and create a new one if you like. You can also save this as an invoice or as a PDF. And here's where you want to delete your invoice or notice you can just void it if you prefer to leave it in here and just have it with a zero balance. Here you can make another copy of this invoice. Again, you would do that if you needed two invoices and you want to make a slight change on one. You can also memorize an invoice or mark it as pending. Remember, if you mark it as pending, it's still in QuickBooks. It doesn't delete it, but it doesn't really show up on reports and things like that until you're ready for it to. You would have to come back here and activate it. You can print this. Notice you can preview. I want to show you what this invoice is going to look like. It's going to be very plain at the moment. Let me zoom in here. And you can see that it has the company name and the address. It says invoice here on the right. There's the date of the invoice and the invoice number. Your bill to, ship to. You can see the project name is what they're currently calling this field. Later when we talk about customizing we can change that to say job name. And then you'll notice also all of the items that you're invoicing for. And at the bottom, you've got your subtotal, sales tax, total, payments and credits, and balance due. And again, we'll want to customize that. I'm going to hit close. And I'm going to pull down print again real quick because I want to show you here's where you can print the invoice or print the batch. In order to print the batch, you would need to have several created and then choose the option to print later. When you're ready to print the batch, you choose batch and it knows which ones to print. Notice you could also print a packing slip, a shipping label, or an envelope right from here, or save it as a PDF. So you've got a lot of options there under the print. Let me go ahead and stop the video right here and let's go ahead and look over at part two and we'll keep going and I'll show you what all these buttons mean. We are working in Module 4 and we're all the way down to Section 3 now where we're talking about invoicing from estimates. 
We've already talked about how to actually create that invoice. Let's go ahead and finish talking about some of the options you have that are on the screen when you're actually invoicing your customers. Let's go ahead and keep going through these buttons on the main tab. We're all the way over to attach a file. If you have any files related to this particular invoice that you just want to keep attached, you can do that here. Again, you would do that because you don't want to leave QuickBooks to go search for them at some point. Here's a couple of new buttons you have not seen. The first one is add time slash cost. Let me tell you a little bit about this and then we'll actually look at it more in depth in a later module. You're going to have a lot of expenses you incur related to this particular invoice you're creating. As you're creating those expenses, whether you use the credit card, you write a check, the debit card, it really doesn't matter how the expense is created, but there will be a field there where you can put in the customer and the job. If you have done that, then you have the ability to pull those into this particular invoice whenever you're ready to invoice your customer to get reimbursed. It's a great little feature if you have this type of expenses. The next one is apply credits. If you have already created a credit memo, you can come here and apply that credit memo to this invoice. Progress will basically just show you the progression from the estimate to the invoice, how far you've gotten in that whole progressive cycle there. You can receive a payment. If the customer gives you a down payment, for example, you can receive it here, but chances are you're not going to be on this window when you're ready to receive a payment. You can create a batch. Let's say there were three different customers who were going to pay this invoice. Maybe they were each going to pay a third of it. You can actually take this one invoice and it will create one and send it to multiple customers. That's a pretty neat feature if you need it. Also, there's your refund or credit option. If you're going to actually create a credit memo or you're going to refund a customer for something, this would be how to do it. Let's go to the formatting tab and see if there's anything new there. And all of this is the exact same as we saw when we were working with our estimates. These are going to allow you to customize the invoice template. There's your spell check insert a line, delete a line, and copy a line. And again, this has to do with customizing your template. Under the tab send slash ship, here's something new. Let's say that you actually ship physical items. You can actually schedule your FedEx, your UPS, or your United States Postal Service right from here. What's really cool is if I went ahead and said ship FedEx package, it would take me right to the FedEx website so I don't have to get out of QuickBooks, go over there and log in, and all I would have to do is just log in from this screen and I'd be ready to ship my package. These two here have to do with mail merges with Microsoft Word. Your last tab has your reports. Again, the important one I want you to be aware of is the transaction history because this is going to let you see the actual estimate that started the whole thing, how many invoices have been created, any payments towards this invoice all the way through. Here are your reports that have to do with invoicing. You've got one where you can view the open invoices. Those are ones that have not yet been paid. You can look at your sales by customer detail and also your average days to pay. That's going to be your options as far as creating invoices this way. I'm going to go ahead and hit save and close at the bottom. And now you'll see that we're back in our customer center. You can see here that we have an invoice and an estimate for our customer. Now what I'd like to do is go ahead and invoice my customer for the remaining amounts that were on that estimate. I'm just going to repeat the same process basically. I'm going back to create invoices. I'm going to pull in my customer my job. I'm going to choose the estimate that I want to pull from and something that might confuse you is sometimes people are looking for this amount to be a little different. They think it should have decreased by the amount of the first invoice, but it doesn't. This is always the amount of the original estimate. I'm going to go ahead and click OK and I want you to notice that this time the first one's a little bit different. Notice it asks me if I'd like to create an invoice for the remaining amounts of the estimate. I could do another percentage or I could select items or different percentages of each item. 
I'll go ahead and choose the first one this time and pull in the remaining amounts and click OK. And now you can see that my quantity has brought in anything that hasn't yet been invoiced. Again, if I wanted to add that delivery charge, I could certainly do that. I'll add another one at $25. And then you're familiar with everything around the screen already, so we won't go back through that. But that's how you're going to invoice for whatever was left. Welcome back. We are working in Module 4, and we're all the way down to Section 4 now, where I want to show you briefly how to invoice a customer for products and services, especially when you don't have an estimate you'd like to attach to that invoice. It could be for the same customer or for a different customer. Let me show you how that's done. All you have to do is go straight to Create Invoices. You can skip the estimates. When you click on Create Invoices, you're going to pull in your customer name and the customer job. If you pull in your customer name and the customer job, and it does pop up with the window that says there's available estimates, and let's say you don't want to invoice for something from the estimate, maybe it's something totally different, just cancel out that window and you'll be back on this screen. Now all I have to do is fill everything in. Let's say that I'm going to charge for blueprints and I want to have a quantity of two of these at $500 each. And let's say on the next line down that I pick blueprint changes and I'll go ahead and put description in there and I'll just do one of these and we'll just charge $50 for that and I could keep on going. And that's really all I have to do. I just want to make sure that everything else is the exact way I want it. Maybe if I want the date changed or I want a particular customer message at the bottom, I just go ahead and fill all that in. Once I'm done, I'm just going to save and close. And if I go back to my customer center, you're going to see that now I have an estimate, the two invoices I did earlier, and the new invoice I just created. And that's pretty easy. That's all there is to invoicing your customer for products and services that are not related to estimates. Hopefully what will happen next is you'll get paid. Why don't we go ahead and go over to Section 5 and I'll show you how to receive those payments once they come in the door. Hey everyone, Ava here. Thanks for watching. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. Click over there to get the complete course for QuickBooks 2019 and click over there to watch the complete set of QuickBooks 2019 videos in this playlist. We'll see you next week with additional videos.